Okay, so let's talk about the identification of children at very low risk of clinically important brain injuries after trauma. And this comes out of an article from The Lancet in, on October 3rd, 2009. So what are we really talking about here? We're talking about which kids with minor head injury do we really need to get a CT on? The article quotes that in, from 1995 to 2005, we've doubled the num number of CT heads we've gotten on kids. And that about 50% of kids that come into emergency rooms in North America are going to get a head CT. So what's the problem? Well, there's a few. Of course, there's the cost of the CT. You may have to sedate the kid. There's the time spent in the emergency room. And there's also, what are you, uh, what are you going to do with false positives? And most importantly, is the fact that head CTs can cause lethal cancers. And they quote a rate of 1 in 1,000 to 5,000. Let's remember this number because this is about to become very important. Using this and the results of the studies, we're going to be able to create a tool that's going to allow us to have an informed discussion with parents regarding whether a CT is a good idea or not. So this study looked at 42,000 kids. Think about that. 42,000. That's a huge number. And this was broken down into two groups. Kids less than two and those two and older. And in the first half of the study, they derived the rule, and they used the second half of the study to validate the rule. And the results they got were that for the group that were, and for the kids that were less than two years age, they got a negative predictive value of 100% and a sensitivity of 100%. And for the older kids, they did almost as good. They got a negative predictive value of 99% and a sensitivity of 96.8%. They excluded kids who had uh, trivial injuries. That is, anyone who fell while they were at ground level or they were walking or ran into some stationary object. They also excluded kids with more severe injuries or comorbid conditions. So that means anyone with penetrating trauma or brain tumors or some other pre-existing neurologic condition. And their endpoints, that is, the things that they were looking for that were the bad things that they were trying to exclude, included death from the traumatic brain injury, they required neurosurgery, they needed to be intubated, or required a hospitalization of two or more nights. That is, anything more than just an observation state. Now, this is an important point to go over, the endpoints thing. In the sense, what did they not use? They did not use a positive head CT as an endpoint. And why is that? Well, first, not all kids got head CTs in the study. And secondly, and more importantly, a positive head CT is not what we're really worried about. This is not a patient important outcome. The parent of a kid doesn't really care if they had a positive CT. They worry about these things. Death, neurosurgery, the kid has to be intubated or hospitalized. These are the things that really matter to the patient or the patient's parent. And remember, you can have a positive head CT that is clinically insignificant kid may have a small subdural, you admit the kid for 23 hours, repeat the CT in the morning, show that the, C, the subdural hasn't grown, kid is continuing to act normal, and then you're able to discharge them home. So a positive head CT is not significant. Now let's talk about the different mechanisms of injury. And they broke them down into severe, moderate, and mild. And we talked about these a little bit already. A severe injury would be a motor vehicle crash when the patient was ejected, there was death of another passenger or the car rolled over, or a pedestrian or bicyclist was not wearing a helmet, was struck by a motorized vehicle, uh, falls of more than 1.5 meters, or that's 5 feet, in kids who are, or who are more than 2, and uh, falls of uh, 0.9 meters or 3 feet in those younger kids, those less than 2. Now, the mild injuries, those are the ones that the ground level falls or a kid that just runs into something. And uh, anything else was considered moderate, and those are the ones we looked at. Remember that severe was excluded, and so is mild. Okay, so now let's go over the rule. First, for those kids who are less than two years of age. So remember, if the kid had a moderate uh, mechanism, and they had a GCS of 14 or other signs of altered mental status or palpable skull fracture, if that's true, then yes, do a CT. The risk of a clinically uh, 
important traumatic brain injury is 4.4%, or maybe like 1 in 23 kids are going to have some serious injury. If not, if they don't meet these things, then you go down to this next box. And if they have an occipital or parietal or temporal scalp hematoma, a history of loss of consciousness of more than five seconds or a severe mechanism of injury, or they're not acting normally per parent. If they don't have any of those things, they don't recommend a CT because the risk of a clinically important traumatic brain injury is going to be less than 0.02% or less than 1 in 5,000. So now remember that number we thought about for the cancer. So it was 1 in 1,000. So if you had a kid who didn't have any skull fracture, altered mental status, had a normal GCS, and didn't have any of these things, then the kid is more likely to develop a lethal cancer from the CT than they are to have a clinically important traumatic brain injury. See how powerful that is to say? You can tell the parent this. You could say, look, we are more likely to cause your kid cancer than we are to find anything important. Now, if the kid did have some of these things, maybe one of them, then you have two choices. You could either observe them or get a CT. And the choice is based on one of these things, the physician experience, multiple versus isolated findings, worsening symptoms, age less than three months, or parental preference. So there's a couple of things worth mentioning here. Parental preference is important. What is the Hey, what is the mom or dad going to feel comfortable going home with? A CT or observation? Let them be part of the decision. Age less than three? Yeah, I'd probably scan them. Uh, if they, of course, get, if they have all of these symptoms here, if they have an occipital hematoma and they had loss of consciousness and they are not acting normally, then maybe it's worth scanning them instead of just observing them. Another important point is this hematoma. This is easily missed because this can be hidden within the hair. So make sure you dig in the hair and make sure and see if there's any hematoma, occipital, parietal, or temporal. Remember, frontal hematomas, that's that is forehead hematomas, they don't count. You can have those and it's not a problem. So that's the rule for the kids who are less than two years of age. Now let's look at the older kids. In the kids who are two or older, we're gonna follow this rule. Again, if they have a GCS of 14 or other signs of altered mental status or basal or skull fracture, you know what? Go ahead and get the CT because they have a risk of a clinically important brain injury of 4.3% or about 1 in 24. And this far exceeds our 1 in 1,000 risk of cancer. Now, if they don't meet any of these criteria, you go down to the next box and you ask these questions. Do they have any loss of consciousness, vomiting, severe mechanism of injury, or headache? Now, note, these are different criteria than we had for the ones, the kiddos who are less than two. They have a risk of a brain injury of 1 of a 0.05%, or that's about 1 in 2,000. And again, remember that the risk of developing a lethal cancer is about one in a thousand. So that's an important discussion you can have with the parents. Now, if they do have some of these features, we go to this side again, and we have the same choices again, to either observe or to get a CT, and we use the same features, physician experience. If they have one of these things, you might observe. If they have lots of these things, you'd probably get the CT. If their symptoms are getting worse, then you're going to get a CT. And again, whatever the parent feels safe with. Look, the risk of a brain injury here is about 0.9%, which is about 1 in 111, which is far greater than our risk of cancer, which is 1 in 1,000. So that's it. That's how we identify kids with low risk of brain injuries. And which will be some of the important points again. Remember the lethal cancer rate is about 1 in 1,000, up to 1 in 5,000. Uh, and we looked here at, at some novel endpoints. We didn't look at a positive head CT. Instead, we looked at things that matter to the patients. Death, the, the necessity of neurosurgery, intubation, or being hospitalized for more than two days. And uh, we broke this down into two groups, less than two and greater than two, and we follow these protocols. And we can break it down into the risk of 
how does this risk of uh, brain injury compare to the risk of cancer? And if the cancer is greater than this, than the brain injury, then it's really not worth doing. And that's a, a good way to have this discussion with parents. And it might even be helpful to have this little f figure with you when you have that discussion with them. And you can step them through it, walk them through it, so they can also understand how you're coming upon your thinking. That's it. Thanks a lot.